everybody, this is 10pin for 10pin plays, and today we're playing the Stanley Parable. Now during my first run through, we jumped off a platform. I'm kind of wondering where that platform went. So let's go find out. But first... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps... Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes. Almost certainly, 50 clicks. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Okay. Let's see. Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. You're like a woman redecorating. A little to the left. A little more to the left. No, uh, too far. A little to the right. Ah, oh, jeez. Now, back to door number 437. A little more to the left. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know... The copy machine. All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. Yes, this is great. You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. We've almost got it! Now the copy machine, do that one again! Do I want to? Are you certain? Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door 430! Yes! We did it! Oh, wow. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now, what were you thinking? <gasps> okay. Well, let's continue on, shall we? Uh, I, yeah. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I 
not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Spoken like an overly attached so wife. Then, your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Mm hmm. Shit. Let me out. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. Ah! I'm done! <laughs> Gotcha. Oh, Don't come. do that after watching Doctor Who. I actually think you had a loving wife. <sighs> we want to commit their life to you. I'm trying to Shit. make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Oh. God damn it. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. <laughs> Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. This is called normal life, buddy. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Like you were with door 430? So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. <coughs> that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path. Mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. To, he won't stop. Here, here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. No, I'm not a prophet. I don't listen to the voices in my head. You see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? 
How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. Excuse me, that's just wrong. Because the end is never the end, is never the end, is loading, never the end. <laughs> but with that said, Phillies and Channel Cold, boys and girls, children of all ages, that brings this round of Stanley Parable to a conclusion. I'm 10 pin for 10 pin plays, and as always, there are two dates and time they'll carve on your stone. Everyone knows what they mean. But what's more important is the time that is known by the little dash there in between. Give that dash some stories to tell. Peace.